Music and technology have always been inexplicably linked since the beginning. When we think of the words music and technology, images of metallic powered objects spring to mind, with their electric and mechanical parts lighting up, buzzing and resonating with sound. But the musicians and inventors who helped bring about electronic music and the tools and technologies that led to the creation of the present day synthesizer, the sound sampler and other music technologies as we know them were part of a gradual, unplanned revolution that started well before the discovery of electricity itself. Each inventor seemed oblivious to the lasting impact and implications of their discovery, but electronic music as we know it today owes its inception to this vast number of curious and creative forerunners, the generations of musicians and inventors who came before us. For them, necessity was the mother of invention, as was the burning desire to find new ways to make new sounds. This alone was enough to inspire musicians and inventors to discover new technologies, make new instruments and new music. By standards, electronic music can be taken from many different forms of media. It can be taken from um, outside world influences or sorry, out of, what would you say, out of context type influences. So it's not just restricted to, I guess, traditional means of electronic, which might be synthesizers or uh, other electronic means of making a sound. It can be taken from anywhere. It's such a deep, que that's a deep question. In the past, electronic music was regarded as any kind of music created with the help of electronic musical instruments or electronic processing. This definition was dropped as nearly all forms of recorded music and the majority of live music performances now rely on the extensive use of electronics in production, recording and amplification, all to increase the volume and properties of instruments. The term electronic music now applies to any music that uses electronics as its focal point or inspiration. Electronics play a major hand in its creation and production. When we talk about electronic music's beginnings, we must think about the nature of sounds and how we create them. A sound is a sensation we experience when the surrounding air vibrates. These vibrations take the form of sound waves. As soon as humanity crafted its first musical instrument, we were creating rudimentary technology that aimed to control and change sound waves. So with making sounds came synthesis. By changing sound waves, we were modulating sounds. So electronic musicians of today are not doing anything new. They are simply extending music production to its furthest limits. Using electronic tools, they make new sounds by controlling the shape of sound waves. So a synthesizer synthesizes sounds, then modulates their waveforms. To power their instruments and make new sounds, the first musicians used the elements air, water and wind. Tracing the origins of our ability to synthesize sounds can take us as far back as the second century BC. The modern day synthesizers forerunners were in fact organs and the very first organ was the hydrolis. A Greek engineer dared to ask the question how can a person play more than one instrument at a time? The answer was the hydrolis. As the name implies, this earliest form of synthesizer wasn't powered from electricity at all, but by hydraulics, the use of water and pressure running through a system of pipes. Nearly 2,000 years later, mechanically driven instruments would make way for electromechanical instruments and set the course 
for the creation of electronic music. The beginning of electronic music is most commonly attributed to the moment in 1876 when Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. The telephone converted sounds into electronic signals for the very first time, and this was a monumental event as it had identified that electricity had a place in the transformation of sound, and in doing so, a role in music making. Some of the most basic archaic forms of early 19th century would be the teleharmonium, I guess, which was based on um, telecommunications equipment of the day, which weighed in at tons of uh, equipment. Um, and then from there, I guess the biggest revolution happened, well, with tape manipulation was probably the next big leap forward with a lot of our 20th century composers, which is mainly based in Germany and France with uh, music concrete. Um, from there, probably the next biggest influence would be people like, um, like Bob Moog and, um, and the guys from EMS over in England. Uh, making electronic instruments more affordable and more portable for electronic artists to take on stage and perform with. After the invention of the telephone, an avalanche of inventions soon followed. Individually brilliant for their time, combined, they propelled the evolution of electronic music making. From Thomas Edison in 1877, the phonograph heralded the ability to mechanically reproduce sound and thus sampling was born, welcoming the era of mechanical reproduction. 1906 would see Thaddeus Cahill introduce the world to his telharmonium, the first electronic instrument weighing 200 tonnes. Expensive and cumbersome, but a milestone. The invention of the triode, a vacuum in a glass tube, allows a transmission of sound through electrical signals a key component that would find its way in early analogue instruments. By 1907, Bussoni, an inspired Italian composer, composes the first electronic music score called Sketch for a New Aesthetic of Music. Rusoli's 1912 Musica Futurista manifesto calls for musicians to explore the tones that can only be found in noises. Add to the great central themes of the musical poem, he said, the domain of the machines and the victorious kingdom of electricity. In 1915, DeForest's invention, the oscillator, produces tones from electronic signals. DeForest's oscillators will form the fundamental basis of all electronic tone generating instruments. Guest and Merriman produced the world's first electrical recording in 1920 using a microphone. That same year, Leon Theremin invents the first portable, practical electronic instrument, the theremin. In 1926, George Anthiel's Ballet Mécanique causes a sensation in Paris. The piece is scored for pianos, xylophones, doorbells and airplane propellers. Two years later, Alicia Gray invented the first electric musical synthesizer, called the Tritonium. It was a byproduct of his telephone technology and created sound that was controlled from a self vibrating electromagnetic circuit, a basic single note oscillator. Gray would also go on to build a simple loudspeaker. The wheels were in motion. <laughs>